bellowing out. <laughs> I won, suckers! We're at the moment where Vegito allowed himself to be absorbed by Super Buu in the original series. And given the title, The Birth of Vegito, it may be safe to assume this is Vegito's Universe 16 in the Multiverse Tournament. Using a shield of key, our hero believes he's in the clear, at first thinking to lower the barrier, but in this iteration, he decides against it. Just a gut feeling. Searching around, it doesn't take him long to find his friends. Reducing Super Buu back to his more brutish form, decreasing his strength dramatically. The fused fighter goes to look for an escape. Turning around, he sees Fat Boo, just as his foe makes his appearance. Talking to himself, he notes this is the one that was eaten after being transformed into junk food. Maybe while he's in here, he can find more who were absorbed that way as well. Overhearing his idea, Super Buu admits the other Majin was a special exception. There are no others besides him absorbed in such a way. Wondering what was going on, he declares Vegito is quite the tenacious one, and having the audacity to remove his cocoons, he will pay dearly. With a smirk, Vegito taunts for his enemy to bring it. He'll just blow a big hole in his body. But returning the cockiness, Boo doesn't believe he'll be able to. Confused has attacked very little. Turns out, our hero is so small, his strength means nothing. In fact, even in his powered down form, Boo claims to have the advantage. But, because why not? Vegito grabs hold of Fat Boo's cocoon, resolving to merely reduce his host's strength even further, causing him to go into a frenzied panic, screaming for his adversary to stop it and let the other Boo go, liking the look of dread on his face. Vegito finds this situation very interesting. As the Majin goes on to yell, if that one is removed, he won't be himself anymore. No! Ripping it out of place, Super Buu falls to the floor. As the Saiyan knows it's time to leave. Realizing his surroundings are narrowing, whatever his foe is going to transform into, it seems to be happening sooner than later. Finding an escape, everyone returns to normal. Placing his family and friends in a safe area. Oddly enough, Vegito actually senses an increase in energy from the Majin. Not as much as when Gohan was absorbed, but nonetheless unexpected. Becoming Kid Buu, our hero now senses a drop in power, noting how peculiar this all is. But still, at least he's less dangerous now. Randomly letting out a blast that could have easily destroyed the planet, the fused warrior realizes how crazy this new creature is. Vegito knows he has to finish this quick. And chomping away bit by bit, soon there's no more Majin left to destroy causing the Kaios to shout out in victory. As the others begin to regain consciousness, our hero questions if they're feeling okay. But upon laying eyes on the fusion, all three have to ask, Dad? Not really addressing the confusion at hand, Vegito simply inquires if Dende can arrange gathering the Dragon Balls, so all the innocent lives lost can be wished back. And while it'll take another four months for them to be restored, he'll do what he can in the time being. And a few days later, they would be gathered, the Namek even able to activate him early, undoing all the harm and destruction caused by Majin Buu. But not everyone's lives could return to normal, as there is no Goku or Vegeta anymore, only Vegito. Trunks rejecting this man, claiming he is not his father, who admits that's true. But he does have as much love for Trunks as his father did, for both the son and Brie family actually, causing some initial discourse between Chi Chi and Bulma, but letting out a laugh, and shedding a tear, Chi Chi asks what she's thinking. Goku's been dead for seven years now, and she isn't going to steal Bulma's husband, merely requesting Vegito come and visit them and remain a father to Goten, which she is happy to do so. With this, life would resume, keeping his promise and being a father to two households, constantly teleporting between the two. He and Bulma would have a daughter with enormous potential, and around the same time, Pan was born to Videl and Gohan. A few years later, 
they both became students of Vegito, ushering in a whole new adventure of their own. In Gaskarkle's Universe 7, at the edge of the galaxy lies the planet Icarion, famous for hosting a city as large as a small country, whose sole function is to collect and preserve knowledge and cultures of all known worlds. Its people, the Alcmenians, are neutral by nature and ensure the safety of their city through treaty agreements with the planet's neighboring civilizations. Though, such alliances are quite useless when it's the Frost Demons who seek your allegiance. As inside this gigantic structure, someone shouts, You're slow on the uptake, Great Sage! In such detailed, talented artwork that is so, so not right for Dragon Ball, a man barters with Cooler, beckoning. Their knowledge is for all who seek it and are willing to learn. But the Frost Demon declares, the information of this world is now his and his alone, as is the planet itself. The native pleading, their people have enjoyed peace for eons now, so why do this today? Cooler snipping, the man misunderstands. The only reason their world has been left alone for so long is simply because it's distant location in the universe, nothing more. Demanding the natives of the planet surrender power immediately. Further barking, he takes solace in the fact that he sees their information as a potential weapon. Otherwise, this kingdom would already be reduced to ashes. When Salsa shouts out for his leader, spotting Frieza's ship in the sky. But as we know, and as Cooler knows, Frieza met his end on Namek somehow. So his brother deduces, whoever is piloting that ship is either a scavenger or the executioner. Spouting, this is the ship of his brother, Prince Frieza, and this man is going to tell him exactly how it came into his possession, bluntly inquiring if he was the one who killed him. But calmly emerging, Gast merely questions if Cooler really wants to challenge him, or will he instead be wiser than his sibling? Not taking kindly to resistance, Salza powers his blade, shouting how dare he speak to Lord Cooler in that way, begging his master to let him take him out. But surprisingly, his leader advises against it. Even Gast growls the armored squadron member should listen to his boss. But bellowing for silence! Using the opportunity to mercilessly take down Cooler. The Galactic Prince still clings to life, though his men are shredded to pieces. And unfortunately, Gast has not come here to talk to him, ending the Space Lord for good. In the palace, one of the natives is elated to see their problem has been solved, but his elder presses not to get carried away, as nothing assures this man is not merely another tyrant. Though, presenting himself before him, the Namek explains the situation. Given he cannot reproduce, and the Dragon Balls are no more, he has searched the universe to find a way to save his people. Since this is a planet of knowledge, he hopes they will have a solution for his predicament. But it's revealed, the Namekians decided against sharing their information. Nevertheless, as thanks for his intervention, they will reach out to other worlds to seek a solution. But the issue remains. The murder of Prince Cooler will undoubtedly attract the wrath of King Cold, and this entire galaxy will suffer from his mourning. And there is little question, he will come to this planet and destroy it. Gast being the only one who could hope to stand up against him. It's brought up, he must annihilate him. But the Namek scoffs, he is no one's to command. Though he's reminded, if this planet is destroyed, the chance of him restoring his people is greatly reduced, introducing a child called Thorn, who will act as his guide. But Gas doesn't believe the aid of a kid will do much to help him. The natives press not to underestimate the younger generation of this world, as the people here are renowned for their knowledge, questioning if he agrees to save them once more. Reluctantly, Gast brings the youngster to the ship, who couldn't be happier to get a look at a royal imperial vessel. Running around, he abruptly stops, finding Vegeta and Kui. He asks who they are. Since Gast himself didn't know how to fly this thing, he, uh, hired these two pilots, releasing them from suspended animation. He demands they lead him to their emperor. Beginning the journey, Thorn mentions the controls of the ship aren't too complex, so next time, he shouldn't have any issues in taking the helm. Either way, it's projected they'll arrive on Cold Planet 1 tomorrow, and with any luck, they'll hold the element of surprise and their foe won't even see it coming, or have time to prepare. But Vegeta pipes up, piffing they not be ignorant. Cold's empire is vast, and his spies are everywhere. There is no doubt he's already aware of Cooler and Frieza's demise, and is fully anticipating their arrival. And the Emperor will be more than prepared to avenge his sons. The day would pass, and the crew arrives at Cold's personal planet. Descending upon a very alien-looking palace, 
Gas turns to his captives, alerting they're free since they're no longer needed. Flying away, Vegeta has never been so insulted, but at least he's alive. Gazing up at enormous statues, the Namek gets his first look at his opponent, even stating this aloud. But stepping in, a voice utters, Not quite! Presenting himself in his final form, Cold questions how his visitor likes his kingdom. But having no desire to make friendly with this tyrant, Gast quips and illustrates the megalomania that thrives so well in his bloodline. Thorn trembling, already knowing what Cold's original form means for his strength. Explaining, this state's power threshold is so high, even the frost demons themselves struggle to control it. And if rumors are true, and Frieza's final form is about the same as Cold's second, one can only imagine what strength he bears. <laughs> well, did that wake you up? Mm. You're completely irresponsible. You could have destroyed the whole planet. That show you up, huh? Just who do you think you are? Meanwhile, in the palace, Queen Vegeta searched for a way off the planet, getting lost in its maze-like architecture. Staring at the battle, the prince merely mutters the word, terrifying. Coming over to question what he's talking about, the pair get a look at Cold's death ball, amazed he could pack so much energy in such a small attack. Knowing the impending massacre, they resolve to get out of here quick. But upon finding only a single space pod, Kui seems to have had a change of heart regarding his rival, having survived so much with them during their imprisonment by Ghast. Deciding it won't be comfortable, but there is enough room for the both of them. But Vegeta hasn't changed. Proving to be just as sinister as ever, the prince laughs aloud he'd even consider the idea of sharing it. Leaving Kui to die on this world, one way or another. Five seconds until shuttle launch. Good! That's enough! Thorn, find some cover. Even with the ground beneath the pair rumbling, the kid tries to find a safe place, if at all possible. When Vegeta's pod is seen dashing through the air, but it seems the vessel can't move fast enough, as the sheer force of energy and debris send it flying off course, causing the prince to believe that idiot Cold will turn this planet to ashes before he even has time to escape. Impossible! Miserable! Calling Cold as foolish and arrogant as a son's, his reign has come to an end. But not believing the battle to be finished yet, Cold screams the Namek doesn't know what he's talking about. With a final blast, Cold is no more, Thorn and Vegeta looking on in disbelief. Letting out a long exhale, Gas falls back to the ground, the child running at him, unable to contain his excitement. Going on and on like kids do, the Namek humorously tells him to shut up. With Vegeta's retreat, our two heroes sit amongst the rubble. Upon healing the child's minor injuries, Gast admits it'd be a good idea to train Thorn, not wanting to have to worry about him in the events he faces any dangerous encounters. Walking off, the kid questions what about the other two? Even if they are a lot weaker, won't they still be a danger to others? But the fused warrior doesn't think so. First off, one of them is dead. Second, the survivor of the two will likely venture out to do his own thing now, especially because he's no longer under the Frost Demon's boot, surely settling some personal scores along the way, but will in no way be a threat to Thorn or his people, assuring he not worry. With the Imperial ship they arrived on being destroyed, it wouldn't take long for the Achmenians to send a vessel of their own to bring the pair back to Icarion. Alas, they have still not found a solution to the Namek's problem. However, they offer him sanctuary in their city as thanks for his services, who graciously accepts. And with time, they may find the answers Gast is looking for and will surely continue to search for him. Thus, Gast found a semblance of peace. While not ultimately what he seeks, it will serve as a means of fulfillment until he finds a way to revive his people. Four months later, on a remote planet, the Ginyu Force, Frieza's personal guard, has fallen at the hands of Vegeta, who has discovered the power of the Super Saiyan. But comparing it to Ghast, the prince falls to his knees, knowing it's not enough, leaving yet another hole within him. <laughs>